All right, here we are back in Dallas, Texas. This is the final four of the MFCA Con 11 leg. Uh, from here, we'll narrow down to the final two that will play for the championship that will have an automatic bid, a qualifier to the world championships tomorrow. On our feature board right now, we have Pat Morris and his Carolina Panthers against Rafik McDaniel and his Houston Texans. And this is going to be a battle for the ages. Both of these two coaches have been on a tear in the last five, six games. So we'll get you going here. And we'll see if we can... Since we clear out the the pit here a minute, we got so many people standing in front of cameras trying to get a view that they don't realize there's four monitors over their head. It's just as good as standing two foot from the board. So So can you go over, uh, you got the all four in, who is who are, who are our final yep, four? Yeah, okay, let me get that. I appreciate We're into it. the final four now. Like I said, this game is Pat Morris and the Carolina Panthers against Rafik and the Houston Texans. And the other two finalists in the final four is Frank with his Bears, Frank Johnson, and none other than the Hulk with the Detroit Lions. And we're all on a collision course before this ends up. I believe you're correct about that. Uh, and I appreciate everybody joining back in. Uh, hey, Blaine, thank you so much. We had a uh, little bit of technical difficulty in that last game. Lost some audio. Things happen sometimes, so really uh, definitely appreciate you guys joining in. We'll have you guys up and running full speed here momentarily. Uh, it is a 30-minute running clock in the first and the second half until we get to a championship game, and then we start talking about timeouts, and we start talking about all the fun things that come into a two-minute warning and some different things going on. So uh, you guys stand by. We'll have you up and, and fully functional momentarily. As soon as we can kind of – we have a couple additional cams we're going to try to feed. Um, and we should be good to go. I'm just kind of tightening up this score. But we had to kind of rebuild a couple things to make it so that our sound wasn't so far off. So if you guys are having any kind of technical difficulties, please holler at us. Let us know. We'll be happy to do it. Hey, Wade, yeah, sure. <laughs> that, that's true. It is kind of a deep south takeover right now. Uh, we've, we've got some things moving on, but – uh, it, this is anybody's ball game right now. And for anybody just joining us and wondering how we got here, uh, play started this morning at about 8 o'clock with 32 coaches. Oh, 44. And it's 44. Four, 34. Uh, and it's taken us uh, about nine and a half hours minus an hour lunch break to get to this point. And we're going to crown a champion tonight for the MSCA Con 11. And that is an automatic qualifier into the world championships tomorrow there's six legs of the qualifier and each one has an automatic bid we have a couple of multiple winners that's already taken their place and if we have another multiple winner what happens is the remaining spots fall down to the highest point getters throughout the season so even if you don't win this and we have a situation where a couple of the guys in the final four absolutely have to win this so they're going to be packing up and going home there's a couple of them that are left in the final four that's going to make it on points irregardless. So um, there's no let up in these guys. They want to win, and they're going to they're going to do their best to take the hardware home. For sure. So we're in for a treat. Um, you know, I think some of this is probably we've said it before. This is probably one of the best tournaments I can ever recall. Um, you know, we've we've seen quite a few games and try to watch as much as what we possibly can. But this is um, you know this is one of those moments that. Hold on to the record books here. So for those of you just joining us, thanks again. What group is close to Knoxville, Tennessee? So, Tom, we have a group in, uh, like, north Na north of Nashville in Clarksville, Tennessee. And then you're looking at probably the Deep South, which is kind of based out of Atlanta. Um, some Alabama squads in there. There's a lot of different ones going on that way. So, um, yeah, definitely there's there's teams all around, but it's it's a little tougher to, 
to get all that situated. So, but it, check out Miniature Football Coaches Association. They have a Facebook page. They've got a couple of different things. Definitely be able to help you out that way. We should be back up and running pretty decently now. We'll kick it over this way, and uh, there we go. So what do we have, a turnover on downs? Have you, are you familiar? I'm not quite sure what happened there. I was trying to get this camera in position. Um, it looks like, yes, I think we have a turnover down here. It's actually pin Rafik rather deep on about his own 25-yard line here. Um, Rafik has been hot or cold with his passes today. Um, when he's on a streak, he's on a streak both ways. So he's going to need he's going to need that quarterback to come through in this game because Pat has an absolute, been an absolute buzzsaw here in the last four or five games. Absolutely. Uh, you know, we just watched Pat, and, and he really, you know, Kelly put up a good fight, but, man, Pat just ran away with it there at the end. So, and we've seen Rafik a few times today on the board. So, you know, this is this is going to be a dog fight. Uh, yeah, Wade, this is a TOC leg. This is the final leg. It's Tournament of Champions, and that's a traveling tournament that there's about six or seven different uh, legs of it. They, they go to um, – Kansas City, Canton, Ohio, up in, D in the D.C. area, in Florida. They just had one. We just uh, broadcast one in, the, in Chattanooga at the River City Blast. And then now we're here. So, uh, you know, in this situation, there's some guys that are gunning it out. Hulk has to win in order to make it to the final eight. Uh, he doesn't have enough points in order to make it all worth it. So, yeah, it's, it's going to be a, it's gonna be a fun time right now. We've watched today at times, we've watched Rafik struggle a little bit on offense to move the ball. He's moved the ball well enough to stay in games, but his defense is absolutely playing lights out. He shut down some of the biggest stars in this hobby. And if his defense is on point, this could very easily be one of those 0-0 overtime games. Hey, thanks, Floyd. I appreciate that. We'll get it caught up here. Thank you so much. Yeah, Floyd, sometimes like uh, right now I look up, I can barely see the board, so I have to look off a monitor. There's plenty of people um, standing in front trying to stand around, and we have to try to clear those out. Hey, Jason, thanks. Does the sound seem to be synced up before this time? It looks like it's better on my end. I think Facebook was kind of going crazy. Earlier we were having about a minute talk after the play itself. Um, so, there we go. We got a little bit of board clear in there. We got uh, <laughs> kind of got the crazy thing going. We got Rafik likes to play from one end, um, and <laughs> Pat Morris likes to play from the side, kind of hitting both of our cameras. Maybe that's the next investment. We go and get a few additional of these new cameras that we just picked up. These things are awesome. If you guys haven't had a chance to check those things out, they're really cool. We actually can zoom. We can hit some different boards. Uh, unfortunately, we cannot hit uh, with all the folks in the way. We cannot hit uh, Hulk's board over here, but we're definitely right here on top of this one.
Hey, Gino, thanks for coming back in, man. We're I think we're up and running for a little bit. We're going to have to get some uh, bouncers on this game. Nineteen twenty-seven left with seven nothing uh, Panthers over the Texans. Texans are on on the drive here. Gino is still offering cookies, so hey, we're getting hungry, man. So no doubt we'll probably take I'm you up on that. I'm still waiting, but I'm about to give up. <laughs> we're gonna have to meet someday. Thanks, Gino. <laughs> Yeah, Rapik's got this thing going in reverse right now. Uh, he's going to have to pull out something deep out of the playbook here. He can't keep backing up and giving yardage. I mean, this is a lot of defense from Pat. Pat's been playing some strong defense, but not not this kind of a, of, of expecting push and going in reverse here. Usually a Texans line is very dominating. Rafik's put together a really, really nice team. You know, for years and years and years, he was a charger. Yep. And he switched over now, uh, head coach of the Texans. This team's a brand new team. It's not a repaint. It's built from scratch. And Pat Morris has these, has these Panthers. We watched him 8, 10, 12 games in the last two months, and he's just getting stronger and stronger each game. Let me see if I can come up with that for you, Jason. Uh, I don't I don't want to interrupt him right now, but let me see what I can come up with. Give me one sec. We're going to see if we can get some headshots of these coaches and uh, kind of put some names and faces with it. Let me. Nope. Pat got into the end zone and uh, tackled with feet deep. With two points, Panthers, and they'll have the ball back in just a second. somewhere from the whole game. So our score with about 16 and a half minutes left in the first quarter or first half is going to be Pat Morrison, the Panthers at nine. Rafik in the Texans at zero, and right now he's got him on the ropes. Knowing Pat and watching how he's going to go, he's going to go for the knockout punch. We're calling for an onside kick right here. Rafik has decided he's going to he's going to try to take the gamble. If he doesn't come up with this, if he doesn't recover this short kick, he's going to be on a very short field to the end zone. Rafik's rolling the dice like a true gunslinger. He's going to go for this and try to keep this game in hand. If he doesn't recover, Pat's going to have a beautiful opportunity to march back in. At least he's already in field goal range if he can make the recovery.
No, I uh, actually I don't think he changed anything up. I believe that's the same team he was using. kick here and see if we can't get this nice and tight. Mr. Kenneth Allen in the way. Dead square in the way. <laughs> it looks more and more real now. Right? Oh, yeah, 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 sure, sure. All right, we had a little bit of delay there while we sorted it out. The coaches call for a replay. Only the referees can request a replay from the booth. But there's, everybody wants to chatter and chime in what they thought and what they see, but... The only people we talk to is the referee. The only people that are allowed in the booth is the referee. And once we give the replay and the referee makes his call, that's it. No more argument. Let's get back to playing football. Well, that's a new feature that we haven't necessarily had before on the network. So. No, it's been coming. It's, uh, it's a work in progress. And, you know, we appreciate our viewership and, and, and the patience and our growing pains and I gave somebody an analogy a couple of times today, and I'll tell you after this play here when we get set up. Appreciate it, man. Hey, we'll see you around. All right. We're back to green flag racing here. And by Rafik gambling for that onside kick, he's put himself in kind of a bad position here. He's backed himself up in the shadow of his own of his own end zone. And what I was starting to say before was just an analogy that I've been trying to describe to people so they can understand that each time out how far we're jumping over the bar that we just set the time before. Um, if you can think of maybe when we did the Queen City Crush uh, as being uh, maybe 
third grade, not to say we were third gradish, but I have to use this to, to show you exactly what was coming out. Um, River City, we were probably high school graduates, and now we're working on a master's program. So that gives you some analogy of how far we're jumping over the bar each time that we set it. And we got some really exciting toys coming down the pipe. You guys are really going to love it. Um, we're working to get our instant replay even quicker and faster. Our graphics like first down and touchdowns. We got some crowd stuff coming in. Uh, we got we got a telestrator that we're working on where I can actually draw on the screen and show routes and show gaps and blocks and that sort of thing. So, and of course, when it gets late in these championship games like this, these championship rounds, everybody wants to be up close and personal. We we know that, and uh, they're still trying to learn here in house, just like you are at home about our growing pains. They, they forget about the cameras and they start blocking things up. And uh, there literally is four 35-inch monitors over their head they can sit and be watching. Once again, Pat's trying to drive to the end zone here from the 35-yard line. He's got a deep drop, almost a 15-yard drop on his quarterback. Uh, don't let that fool you. He can come off and, and go to a mobile quarterback here. It looks like he sits in the pocket. Rafik brought some pressure, but it's wide, and it's going to get there late. It's going to force a pass over to the left side. He does have somebody open and it's going to be an incomplete pass. We're going for a field goal attempt here. Let's see if I can pull it up for you. Looks like he missed it wide left. I have a turnover. So it's going to be the Texans ball. No. Yep, that field goal is de declared no good. So it's going to be Texans ball. All right, so you guys are asking about uh, specifically who uh, everybody is. I want to kind of show you that here momentarily. I think I've got something that'll that'll work out for us. Get them everybody sit together. So in our feature game. We've got a um, couple of excellent talent. And uh, we will pull that up right here. So uh, on the left is Rafik McDaniel. He's the Texans. And this uh, he used to be a Morristown High School uh, team. And then we have Mr. Pat Morris, who's uh, coaching for the Carolina Panthers. That is our feature game currently. And then we have... <laughs> Mr. 
Mr. Frank Johnson is on the right, and um, the Hulk, Jim Davis, is on the left. So uh, those are our final four for right now. Texans on offense. They need to score right now. Try to make something happen out of it. Almost that. Good stationary. Does he have anybody open? Looks like he does about the 30-yard line. Can't tell if that was complete. We'll wait on the coach's call. And it's going to be incomplete. Incomplete. Uh, Jason, I don't have any... Um, any updates on that? We'll try to get that, that Coach's Challenge final very shortly. Uh, I know we will be broadcasting it tomorrow uh, for the actual final. And, Sean, this is the final four of the TOC leg. So, basically what happens, we've got this and obviously another game going on at the same time. And the next game is actually going to be the final game. Based on how all the standings work, they'll determine the points, and we will actually have a final eight tournament tomorrow for the world championship. So this is it's actually two tournaments in one. We're going to finish this one and then start a brand new one tomorrow. Texans need a big play here, and they nearly got sacked. Almost. Going to be a completion. Completion at the 40-yard line. That's going to be at the top of your screen. Gonna be a touchdown. Seven nine. There we go. Seven nine. So huge run there, uh, or pass by the Texans. So right at just a little over a minute left in the first half. Tight, tight ball game. Hi, Mark. Uh, this We're in Dallas, Texas for our national uh, convention, the Miniature Coaches Football Association convention. Uh, we are here at the Westin at the Dallas-Fort Worth Airport. So literally the jets fly right over our heads. Uh, and we're going to be here all day tomorrow as well. And then we will uh, essentially crown – we've got a Coaches Challenge champion, we've yeah. got an amateur Coaches champion, and then we're going to have the – uh, final, Elite Eight champion, and then whatever we have tonight. So four champions this weekend is what right, we're, we're right. going to be crowning. And there's, in addition to all the champions in the championships, there's uh, there's a lot of award winners. We've had school competitions all weekend, things like fastest man, strongest man, most accurate passer, uh, and all those awards will be given here shortly too. For sure. Where are you located, Mark? Seven nine. Set seven nine. All right, and that'll do it for the end of the first quarter. Uh, 
uh, we're going to have one final play, it looks like. Let's see if these Panthers can make a, a last-minute run here. Man open at the 35 top of the screen, and that's complete. We got some safeties back, so... Very cool. Uh, I'm not 100% familiar with the geogra geography of uh, Texas, but I know it's really big. It sounds like things are close together. And then I ask somebody, and they're like five hours apart. So not familiar with Roanoke, but we are right here actually. Um, and like I said, Dallas-Fort Worth, we're right across the street from the airport. And there's a lot of leagues here in Texas, I can tell you that. And we got a fumble. So he's down. That'll wrap it up for the half. Stay tuned right here. Second half of Final Four of the MFCA Con 11. We're almost down to crunch time. It's 7-9, uh, Rafiq McDaniel over Pat with uh, under Pat Morse. Uh, Texans losing to the Panthers currently. We'll be right back with you. Stay tuned.
So we are back live. We're ready to roll. We're in the second half and the of the final four. Uh, we've currently got Pat Morris uh, leading the Texans nine to seven, and we should have a heck of a ball game going on for the rest of this game. I did have a score update from uh, Hulk and uh, Mr. Frank Johnson. It's Frank Johnson 14-7 Bears over the Lions currently. So a good showdown over there. Really good playing. I'm sure we'll hear some hoot and holler as we get closer into it. Montego, we got uh, Rafik against Pat Morris in one half of the final four, and we got Frank Johnson and the Hulk on the other half. These two games, the winners will play each other for the MFC Acon 11 championship. Looks like we're setting up for second down and uh, right at 10 at the 40-yard line. Rafik and the Texans trying to get a drive going on this half. Tight score. 9-7 early in the second half. This is one half of the Final Four championships for the MFCA Con 11 leg of the TOC. One half for Rafik McDaniel and the Texans. Pat Morris and his Panthers. The other half... Jim the Hulk Davis with the Lions and Frank Johnson with the Bears. Classical NFC Central matchup. And I stepped over there a little bit just before the game or the half ended, and uh, they were black and blue already, just like the old days. <laughs> Definitely beat. Hello, Gene Saney. Welcome to the feed. Uh, we're counting it down tonight and ready to go again tomorrow. Yeah, Final Four for sure. Thanks, Donald. <laughs> That's going to be a completed pass, and Rafik's got blockers out in front of him. If he can turn the Jets on here. Looks like that's going to do it for a first down. Texans are on the drive, so they've got a good thing going here. They're about the 10-yard line. Uh, they've they put it in the end zone a couple times today doing that.
Touchdown Texans. So they're gonna come, they're come roaring back right here. Um, man, what a what a drive. Looks like the peak took them Texans in the locker room at halftime. Hey, Stephen Foster. Yeah, so the score was 14-7, Frank Johnson uh, at the half. Synced up a little better with the official game clock. So great drive by the Texans there to come back. You know, they were down 9 nothing. Now they're up 14-9. Uh, so some really good stuff going on overall there. Uh, we should definitely see a great defensive game here on out. I think I think the Texans try to shut it down right now and try to get some things going. But, well, I was talking to Rafik at halftime, and, and he was talking about he didn't want to try to go into a gamble mode too early, yeah. maybe something inside of the 10-minute mark. Uh, but now he's secured the lead for a little while. And the way his defense is playing, I'm, I, I look for Pat to have to reach deep here because her feet start to smell blood in the water. I think so. Uh, but don't ever count the Pat Morris out. We've watched him oh, no, a time no. or two. Yeah. Uh, it's, this is still anybody's game right now. Well, and, and Pat's game, really the way it comes down to is he, he's not going to do anything really spectacular to you, but everything he does is just so rock solid and fundamental that he just continues to walk the ball down the field. He's capable of going on a good nine or eight minute drive here. And, you know, with a little time on the clock, and if he can secure the lead. Now, the nice thing about it is it's 14 9, so the field goal is not too much in play at this point. Not currently. So, Panthers are going to go for a pass. Uh, they're going to be about the 40 yard line. Drilling square in the chest. It's a good hit. Straight up the sideline. See if we can get a good tackle here. Looks like he, uh, that's definitely going to be a first down. Well, he missed on the first tackle, barely missed. Pat's receiver turned it up the field, got hit down about the 26-yard line, make it the 24-yard line. First and 10 on the way on the march. Yeah. It's going to be first down, Panthers. That looks like about the 22. Uh, so that came right back, firing away. Hi, right, Paul. Thanks for joining. Appreciate you coming back. We're here at the final four of MFCA Con 11, 20 minutes remaining in the game. So if you guys haven't already, make sure you follow uh, Gridiron Buzz Network's Facebook page. That's where we're going to be launching all of our feeds from. We try to share it to as many sites as we can to help get the hobby out there and expose it to uh, all these new guys showing up and uh, even trying to find some folks. We've had a lot of people. We had a couple people on from uh, Germany today on our feed. So uh, it's, it's making its way out there, guys. We've had a lot of fun. We've been broadcasting almost 13 hours so far with my, minus a lunch break. But... Um, it's been a lot of fun today. We've had a heck of a tournament.
seems like Hulk might have just scored a touchdown over there. That may have tied it right back up. Pat's on a drive again here. 15-yard line going in for second down play. And he had a slot receiver that shot out of the gate there that wasn't open, that wasn't covered. He's going to try to hit him in the left slant here, and it looks like it's a direct hit. His passing has been deadly today. Yep, and that's been the difference. Rafik's got one last shot here, maybe trying to stop him at the goal line. And that's going to be touchdown Carolina Panthers. So they're going right back on top um, after taking a... Now this game's really going back and forth. This is going to come down to who's got the ball last, and potentially now you're talking your field goals come back into play again. Hey, uh, John, MFCA stands for Miniature Football Coaches Association. You can actually search that on, like, Facebook. There's actually miniaturefootballcoaches.org. But I would highly recommend just checking out the Facebook page. Inside of that, you'll find links to tons of different spots. Um, depending on where you're from, we can definitely connect you to uh, some leagues and some guys that are around. To, uh, to kind of get you up and running. We're here in Dallas, Texas for uh, a national convention. <laughs> I'm not so sure about that, Paul, but okay, we'll go with it for now. Sixteen thirty-five remaining. Fourteen, sixteen. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, so Paul, um, depending on how far into Minnesota, there's there's guys in Detroit. There are some guys out of Minnesota. Um, you know, it just depends on kind of where you're at. There's some guys in Chicago even. So you can definitely get well connected. But if not, you can at least, um, you know, get connected through Facebook. We've met a lot of folks through that. Uh, it's like a family. You just kind of jump in, ask questions, and go for it. So. This is absolutely broke wide open. Rafik's got a convoy down in front of him. If he can this hit this pass, he can pass. run for it, and he does. Makes oh the connection. Oh, boy. We're about to be off to the races, folks. This is going to be tough. This is going to be really tough for Pat to try to defend down here at the, at the end. Sit on your horse. Here we go. And got it. Touchdown, Texas. So they fire right back. Holy cow. Nice play set up by Rafik. He had a convoy out in front of him with, with almost like a, a forward screen pass. But all of the blockers were actually eligible receivers. He could have chose to go to any one of four. Um, just really looking sharp on this play right here. Pat really just didn't have a chance to even try to track this down. He trails at the end. The only thing you can really wish for in this situation, somebody goes out of bounds or he trips and falls. And right here at the 20, it looks like he's starting to edge out, and then it's into the end zone for the touchdown. So we're going to send this over to our replay booth and let you guys take a look at it. So basically, the pass has already been completed uh, at about the 35-yard line, it, right in the dead center of your screen. Um, that receiver's already there. He's got a nice seal. He's 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. Looked like he's going to run out of bounds and curled right back in for the touchdown. Nice play. Bring it back to our regular scheduled program. Yeah, it's pretty. They make it look pretty effortless, uh, Stephen. I, I I agree. Certain times it's just like, man, it, they just know their guy so well. Earlier today, we saw um, Rafik kind of take a. Uh, he knew the angle so well on his guys. He had a little quarterback draw and ran it right in that way too. So 
Well, and that's what happens, you know, the true pros do make it look easy. Um, but it, it takes hours and hours, you know. A lot of these guys, you'll ask them how much do they practice. It's anywhere from 10 to 30 or 40 hours a week they practice. Looks like they call that a sack. Let's see if they're back. That's a sack. It's a good defense coming in here by the Texans. 13 and this, and and this is what's kept Rafik in the tournament all the way up to this point. It's just he, he has a defensive stand when he needs it the most. If he could ever put a, a complete game together, uh, get his offense, sometimes it spits and sputters a little bit, but um, then he gets hot. And then when that defense is there to back him up, So we're going to have second long. Hey, thanks, James. We appreciate that. Just uh, asking everybody to share the page as much as we possibly can. I think we're supposed to start around 8 o'clock tomorrow. Now, in electric football terms, that's more like right. probably 9.30. Right. We'll be here before that once we get a little better handle on the schedule. Uh, we try to set agendas, and I don't know why we do that anymore. Russ Electric <laughs> footballers, it's start time plus an hour and a half. Yeah. And then, and then we'll and, be there. Yep, absolutely. We'll try to get you updates in the morning as they happen, but these games will run late tonight. Everybody will drag into bed kind of tired, and then we'll get started. Good block it by the Panthers. And they're going to go for a pass. Looking for it, getting that quarterback set up. Looks like maybe number 14 at, uh, at the 14-yard at the line, bottom of the screen. That's complete. And that's it. That's tackled, so they maybe got their uh, loss from that sack back. So it's going to put it third down. Hey, Brent, that's great news. Yeah, uh, this game is uh, similar only in name, I think, at this point. It's very similar. Right. <laughs> it's very similar in, in, you know, you still got guys on bases. You still got teams. You're still playing. But uh, this is this is taking it to a new level. This is the professional side. But, you know, honestly, we play in, in a couple local leagues and, it's it's just incredible the amount of stuff that we've got going on. Uh, you can play at any level. Uh, the strategy, I don't know, necessarily has changed. It's just upgraded. Well, and that's kind of the way it was. You know, I've played this game some almost 50 years now. And uh, in the old days, if you could get a man just to kind of run straight, you thought you had a superstar on your hands. And about 15, 18 years ago, a bunch of grown men got together and figured out that we could take a toy and actually improve on it. There's a term, it's called tweaking, and yes, it's a, it's a true term. And what it is, there's small uh, vinyl feelers or fingers, if you will, uh, we call them shoes, that are underneath the bases. Those can be used and manipulated, flattened, straightened, cut, twisted, whatever it is that you need to do. We can actually, if you, have, if you need a receiver to go 20 yards and cut in, we can actually train them to do that so that they do it consistently every play, or mostly consistently. And once you have that, you can build strategy into actually running real football plays, mm -hmm. real offense, real defense. I mean, we block and tackle just like the big guys, only we do it in one-inch miniatures. So everything that you see on a Saturday or a Sunday game on television, we can reproduce and recreate right here in miniature. And this is why this hobby is, has just been around for so many years. So it looks like he's going to go for the man uh, about the 22, 23 yard line. And that's complete. He's going to try to run away and uh, see if these uh, cornerbacks have some speed to try to save that. That was a quick tackle stop. Good, good tackle by the Texans. That's going to be a turnover on downs, it looks like. For Peaks Texans, Texans taking over deep into Panther territory. 
Oh, we need a medic. We got a man down. Man down. Rafik, Rafik lost a critical piece. Uh, medic in electric football terms, super glue. Yes. <laughs> and sometimes, sometimes double stick tape. But if it's a really serious injury that's going to sideline them for a long time, it's, it's super glue. Yep. And, uh, you know, these, these guys run full rosters. You're talking sometimes, I think, I think TLC rules are somewhere around 50 men. So losing the man doesn't seem that significant. But at the same time, that guy may have done something very specific that Rafik may need. Well, and, if that was, if I, and I can't tell who they actually carted off just yet, but if that was Deshaun Watson, um, that's a big blow to the Texans. I mean, Deshaun on this team, just like in real life, is a huge part of this Texans offense. But I bet you there's 100 bottles of Super Bowl laying in this room right now. <laughs> but as all these great championship caliber coaches will tell you, you have to be prepared for any contingency. Just stay on that side, you're good. Yep, there you go. It looks like looks like Deshaun Watson's back on the field, yeah, so, so fortunately. I don't think him. it was Deshaun. Uh, they do have they do have a medic on there, so we're uh, they're gonna get that guy fixed up. Super glue. Oh man, I think that was, I believe that might have hit him, but we're gonna take a well, they're not going to call it, so we're not going to mess with it. It's going to be that guy came a looping non -sack super, here. Super hard. Completion to number 12. He's got some open space in front of him, but there's a couple of safeties that didn't come across. So it's about the there's one close at hand here. Yep. So the only safety. But I can tell you these Texans have some speed, but they got some speed and some wiggle, and sometimes that's important. And he turned back, but that's going to be a first down. So that's a big play uh, for the Texans. And I look for I look for Rafik not to necessarily sit on a five-point lead, not against Pat Morris, but I look for him to start becoming a little more methodical and a little more ball controlling here. Um, there's no reason for him to try to gamble with the lead, but he does have to consistently move the ball down the field. Even if he doesn't come up with points on this drive, he's got to melt, melt this clock away. Yeah, he just needs to take his time, make first down, just keep the ball on the ground, be safe with it. But I tell you, uh, the 50-yard line sometimes on these boards is extra bouncy. And we're about to come through that, so he's got to be careful. He's got to get it kind of over on the other side. These things, th these boards have motors on them. Uh, they're in, depending on the, how they were made and who made them. Those motors can be kind of anywhere, but. It could be, uh, could this, be a little, little scary coming across that. And point. this is fumble territory right here between the 40s. Um, if you'll notice at the top of your screen, there's gonna, a blitz be a come from bit both sides. Loss. Yep, a little bit of a Tackle loss. Tackle made at the, you're talking about a two-yard loss. That was, a good, that was a good defensive stop by Pat Morris. Looks like they're going to allow the mark to be right at the original line of scrimmage, maybe a loss of a half yard. <laughs> hey, Theandre, thanks for joining. Uh, definitely appreciate that. I'm not sure we shared this on a lot of different uh, pages and things. So, uh, so basically, uh, you know, I'm not sure where you picked us up from, but definitely thanks for joining. Make sure you follow the page. We'll be broadcasting again tomorrow, uh, finishing up this particular tournament. It looks like he got a second down and ten. I've seen this play from Rafik many a time. He's going, he's going to his bread and butters here. Oh yeah, that quarterback is set in the pocket. Open. Does he have it? He's asking for a ruling on the man that's fell, and they're going to say, "Look like it was going to go incomplete." I think they're just going to throw, that. throw it away they're here. Just going to throw it away. Not, not a bad, not, a, not a bad move. Yeah. Took a little time off the clock. Nobody's hurt. Once that receiver fell, I think that was going to be his target. And, hey, uh, hey, Clay, definitely appreciate the feedback on that. So that particular camera doesn't have a ton of zoom. We kind of have a more of a bird's eye view. But believe us, that is coming. Uh, we've got some things going on to make that even better. Uh, we're going to be kind of upgrading some things as we go along. We did pick up those other zoom cams, but if the coaches, which they are currently blocking those right now, we don't want to interfere with them and make sure that they have a good gaming experience. If they if the cameras open up, we can, we can go back to them. Uh, but the, based on where they're sitting currently and how the coach 
Texas are currently playing. We got Rafiq playing from one end and, and Pat Morris playing from the side. So that does that does create some uh, challenge for that. So yeah, we broadcast a number of the games for these two particular coaches and. Quite honestly, they're probably some of the toughest that we have to, to work with, and we love them, and we don't want to interfere with their game. But we got one coming from the side, one coming from the end, and it's difficult to get a camera angle because they do move around a lot. And I think here we're going to – nope. The referee called the sack off. He said because he missed him. The man, the man did fall as well. That was a pass. pass. Holy cow. Did you see that the turn on a, that? That was just a bullet. And these, and these guys are so good that they can throw a ball hard enough to actually turn a base in the direction that they need to run. I mean, it's just simply amazing. Broken tackle, but it did bump into him again. That's going to be another Texans first down with 2.54 remaining on the clock. They're up 21-16. Rafik is playing the right way, I believe, here. Yeah, he, he's, he's just – Locked into that methodical, I know what I want to do. You're not going to distract me. I'm going to get the ball where I need to get it. Yep, absolutely. Uh, sitting in the pocket nicely, looking for a man to pass. He's going to take some time here. Looks like he's got a man about the... And that's going to be another first down for the Texans, so they're going to keep the ball moving. Be ready to go. Get that a touchdown. All right, very cool. Sorry, we got blocked there. We'll get you guys updated on that score. I apologize. Somebody was calling touchdown. That was not a touchdown. So, okay. No, I can't help you much. There. I stepped away to get our camera clear. <laughs> when you look away from this board, sometimes five things happen and you don't even know where you're at when you come back and you have to play catch up. That's so. all right. We'll get her straight back out here. We. We're good. I just I heard touchdown and I was like I didn't see the touchdown. I thought the man ran out of bounds where they marked it at. But well, your response is uh, to the answer to your question: Is he aware of the time? He has a school board directly over his head. There's also one that's mounted on the wall across from him. So they're well aware of the time and they can always ask and call for the time. Right now we're right at 30 seconds left in the game. And I think that's going to probably do it right here. He could throw this ball away, take the time that he needs, and that's going to put him into the finals. So. Looks like a connect. Yep. That'll wipe it up. That'll do yeah, it. It's going to be the game. 21-16 is going to be your final. Coach McDaniels and McDaniel and his Texans over Pat Morris. That was one classic game. What a game. It's only going to get better from here on out. That's the end of the half. We'll give you an update on the Hulk and Frank Johnson's Bears momentarily. Okay. All right, we'll be right back with you, folks. Stay right here. You don't have to go anywhere. We're going to keep this feed rolling. Uh, we've got plenty of time. Everything seems to be working pretty nicely. Definitely appreciate you guys joining. Go out, share this page. Make sure you follow Gridiron Buzz Network. We'll be right back with you. Uh, should just take just a few moments. Thank you.